I'm gonna talk more about from the front lines, what we see. As a doc, my frustration is when people say, I don't wanna know the science, just give me a meal plan. Because you have to understand the implications of this. Insulin resistance is related causally to almost every, and I think he means every, but he says almost every non-infectious chronic disease known, right? That is a massive statement from a, a brilliant scientist. And if we recognize the role of insulin resistance, then we start to understand there's a common root because stress, sleep deprivation, you know, smoking, alcohol, you know, exercise, diet. That's it, guys. That's what the, the best guy on longevity says. He says, use that as an intervention, not drugs. So the train is your liver. The people are sugar. Pushers are insulin. So the question becomes, how much sugar can we have in our bloodstream at one time? One teaspoon. The entire bloodstream, one teaspoon. So how much sugar can the body hold now? That one teaspoon we got, that's four grams. Liver glycogen, 25 or 30 teaspoons. Skeletal muscle, 400. Well, maybe ben, uh, both bends are right. If that's where I'm gonna store most of my sugar, you wanna have more of that, right? So you have 100 teaspoons you can put there, more than your liver, more than you can in your bloodstream. People say, well, I just have this. Okay, you, you can keep one teaspoon in your bloodstream, the rest has gotta go somewhere else. So this is my simple design. So your liver's the train, right? There's your first stop, you come in the morning, it's empty, why? because you've been sleeping all night. Hopefully you're not sleep eating, right? So the morning is empty, everyone gets on, everyone's happy. You can spread out, have social distancing, that's great. Second stop is at noon, right? Now you have 110 people and you have 100 seats. What do you do? Just get as many people in the seats as you can and 10 people stand in the aisle. Hopefully people are nice to each other and let the people who are older sit down and you stand up. Now you get to that third stop. These people are upset, why? They're the sugar who can't get on. They have to stay in the bloodstream and they can't stay there and they know it. So what do you do? You get these guys that push people on the train. Who are the guys? The pushers are insulin, remember. So now you got insulin forcing people on the train, you have a full train. Now you go to Dr. Unwin, one of my other heroes, and here's what he says. This is how it all kind of ties together. This is what we do clinically. Is you show this to patients and they say, oh my goodness, because that's 21 teaspoons of sugar. I could keep one in my bloodstream. I've got to shove that other sugar somewhere. And they say it's a low-fat diet. Yeah, but where do you think it's stored as? So here's some pushers. That's insulin. So this guy's already on the train. So do you think he agrees right now, say, you know what I think the best plan is? Let's put 50 more people on the train, and we'll hire more pushers to push those guys on my train. Do you think this guy would be thrilled with that? The, the train tracks that you see there, are, are that's our blood vessels, right? So we shoot insulin, we take all those people off the tracks, and we stuck them on top of the train, because the train's full now. So now this is what's called fatty liver disease, right? You have glycogen, you have fat, you have all this stuff that these scientists are talking about. But do you think all those people on the train, you say, well, that one came from orange juice, so that's okay. This one came from healthy, heart healthy whole wheat, right? You start realizing this is the fatty liver express. This is what we're dealing with, right? So what do the experts say? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you miss it, you go into starvation mode. So that means fill up your train quickly. Get everyone on the train right away, then you have to deal with that later. Eat six small meals throughout the day, right? Pick up people at each stop. Stop more times and pick up more people. That's pretty smart. So carbs are absolutely necessary. They don't understand basic physiology then. So you get more people uh, waiting at each station again. Just exercise more. It's hard to do when your train looks like that. Right? It's hard to exercise and you're not gonna overcome that. You're not gonna burn enough calories for that sugar you're bringing in. Obviously, looking around, we know that. Heart healthy whole wheat, orange juice, oatmeal, those are all still people on top of the train, right? You could do that all day and you're gonna be in trouble. Eat bananas, Dr. Dr. Unwin would have a stroke, right? Because he knows there's six scoops of sugar in a banana and he shows us all that stuff. You wanna make Jason lose his mind? <laughs> Say a calorie's a calorie. Because he says, you know, is salmon and eggs and steak, will that fill your train? Nope, if you have eggs for breakfast, you're not filling the train. The train's like the three people on there. Are 100 calories of jelly beans the same as 100 calories of salmon? Like people will argue that and they try to make the point because it's a physiology problem, it's a biological problem, it's not a physics problem. We have to understand the, the role of hormones and all this stuff. So how do we solve the problem? We either have more, more trains, muscle and fat tissue, we can have fewer people waiting, less sugar, eating less frequently, fewer stops, right? All these things are things we can do. So will hiring more pushers fix the problem? Nope, you have all those people sitting on top of your train and no one else is getting on. You could hire all the pushers in the world. That's why we give more and more and more insulin. Unless we change what we're doing, that's the reason we're in the situation we're in. 
So this is Jeff, who's become a friend of mine. He got to be 679 pounds, never got diabetes. But I thought being obese would give us diabetes. Well, he has a huge strain of fat that he could store. So in the Asian community, they will get diabetes before they get fat because they don't have the luxury of getting fat. They don't have enough fat tissue, so where do you put all the overflow? That's him. Just recently in San Diego, we had to go for a hike. He's, he's less than 300, he's like 280 pounds now. And he says a year ago he couldn't get out of the car. He couldn't have came there at all. Now he's hiking, going upstairs and doing stuff. This is an anecdote, but this is a life, right? <laughs> so the workers are HDL cholesterol. Now there's a simplified version, because a lot of us are saying it's not just the HDL, but since it's the good cholesterol, they're the, gonna be the good workers here. The train tracks are the blood vessels, big trains muscles. People who can't get on the train are trigly triglycerides and oversupply of energy. So these are triglycerides, the three happy sugar, no, I'm just like, but basically these are three people who can get on the train. They hold hands for safety. So now you got a lot of triglycerides. Hmm. What does that mean? It means your train's full, the other sugar can't get on, and now you have a surplus of energy in the bloodstream. So HDL is just sitting at the station, right? That means everything's good. When you check your blood and your HDL is high, uh, everything's good in the station. Now, what happens if there, there's problems? Those guys leave the station, now they're out working on the train tracks. That's your blood vessels. They're trying to fix the problem that we cause by having a train that's totally overloaded with people, insulin, sugar, all this stuff, metabolic disease. This is from the Endocrine Society, 2019. Large amounts of abdominal fat, you know, belly fat, like we talked about, that's signs of fatty liver disease. Low HDL, like we're talking about, you have a lot of damage in your system. Um, high triglycerides, too much energy in the system again. So maybe Jason Fung's not crazy after all by saying put less energy in your system, right? Make yourself metabolically healthier. High blood pressure, and we'll talk about that a bit. Dr. Unwin and, and Dr. Bickman both addressed this issue. And high blood sugar, huh? Too much energy in the system again. They can't get on their train, so your train's full. So low-carb diet reverses all these things. Yet, the experts say this is the most dangerous thing you could do, and I took a risk by telling people this. So here's one I stole from Ivor. What this study did was in the country of Columbia, they took everyone who had a heart attack, first heart attack. And then they looked and they said, what could we have done to predict this was coming? So they said, let's look, look at different variables. So if it's one, uh, that means there's no difference. So there's no difference between the people who had a heart attack and people in the general community that didn't have a heart attack. Total cholesterol, no difference. LDL, no difference. High blood pressure, doubled the risk. High insulin, almost 700% increase, right? Six, 670 times. How come we're not talking about this? As the A1C goes up, more likely to die of a heart attack. Look at female, right? That's scary stuff. You're going straight up like that, and our main organizations managing this says, yeah, seven's good. If you're at seven, you're at goal, really? I have a 400% increased risk of cardiovascular disease, and I'm good? Yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? Because insulin resistance is happening. You know, your train is getting more full and more full and more full, and you're hiring more and more pushers to get this thing down. Then you have type 2 diabetes diagnosis, right? And now we say, oh, now you got type 2, now we got to do something about it. Why not say, hey, your insulin is going up every time I see you, we better address this. Because it's, not going up, it's only going up because your train is full, right? And we could argue the mechanism, but that's what we see, this is what we see clinically. Dr. Kraft. Individuals with normal fasting blood glucose may indeed be quite comfortable uh, that they are non-diabetic. That is until they have their first heart attack. That goes with the, the data from Columbia that happened years after he said that. This is for a more scientific stuff. Fatty liver disease, no fatty liver disease. Three days apart, and pharma is spending millions of dollars trying to develop a drug to fix this problem that he's doing in three days? Doesn't make sense. Now we have too much science, I don't want to get into the science. I'm gonna do primary care stuff again because I like the train stuff. So this wimpy little guy, Anyone know who he is? Yeah, Sean Baker. So Sean Baker, so he's a doc who trains, so I figured that was a good analogy. But So I'm train number one, he's train number two. So this is my train, right? This is my muscle train. So I got this little train, how many people can I put on? Not very many, right? So I say, well, you're gonna put more sugar on there? No, what, I, what can I do to help my train get bigger? I can put on more muscle mass, and I add a carb there. You put on a little more muscle mass, you add a carb there. So this is Rob's train. I mean, this is not, not Rob, Sean Baker's train, right? Probably Rob's too, but he has this huge, massive train. He can move a lot of people very quickly, right? So here's another picture. So he'll only stop for ribeyes. That's the only thing that's stopping that train. <laughs> but you know, the other thing I just thought of last night was when you get on Sean Baker's train, it's like Hotel California, you, you don't leave. So when muscle takes glycogen, it doesn't release it. If you can start getting low sugars, it's not going that way back into the circulation, right? They're committed now. So you're getting them out of the platform. So what does that mean? So if my muscles are taking all the sugar out of the, off the train tracks, 
The other train, my liver train, is gonna have to let some people off the train to, to replace them, otherwise I'm gonna get low sugar levels. This is glucagon. They're the nice people that let people off your train. Apparently these people who say you need carbs with each meal have never heard of glucagon, because that's its job is not to let you have low sugars. So these guys are nice enough, they let people off the train, so what does glucagon do? Produced by the pancreas right next to the insulin, right? Tells the liver to break down uh, glycogen, activates gluconeogenesis, what is that? You make real sugar? Oh. So you could go without sugar and you still survive? Yes. We know that because we have continuous glucose monitors everywhere now. So this is, is it a light at the end of the tunnel or a train coming at us? This is the nutritional advice we've been receiving for 50 years. This is why I say, hey, you know what? I want, I want people like Ivor in my lane. I want them to help us to understand there's no room for arrogance when we have a disaster on our hands. So should we keep giving the same advice over and over? Now, what do you want your train to run on? I'm sure everyone studied the uh, kindling train right? There's no kindling train because you have to fill that thing all the time. That's the sugar train. Now you want to run on coal, you can run a long time. You don't have to stop at every station now, right? We don't just fill our gas and go, okay, we can put like eight cents in and I'll stop at the next gas station. You fill up your tank. And that's what people are doing. They can go between stations way better. So Caesar salad, right? The, the, I just want to tell you some of the, the side things. Caesar salad, uh, a great person. She was 319 pounds on the standard of care. She was on all those medicines having seizures all the time. So my profession said, hey, good news. We mapped your brain. If we cut out part of your temporal lobe, uh, there's a 60% chance you can be seizure free. And she said, well, I want to try a keto diet. That's too dangerous, right? It's too dangerous. We're going to cut your brain, and then you wonder how many people this has happened to that could have just changed their life. Five years, no seizures. Does she cheat on her diet? No. Why? It's not worth it to have a seizure. <laughs> it's not worth it. She has total uh, compliance. So 50% of kids with epilepsy, uh, refractory to meds, can improve with diet. So would you rather have your brain cut on or would you rather change your diet? Now these people are big heroes to me. What do they all have in common? Psychiatrists. It's one thing we've kind of missed here, but I think it's critically important. They're all treating anxiety, depression, PTSD. This nutty guy right here, who's one of my heroes, right? Chris Palmer, schizophrenia. When I heard about this guy, I said, the guy's nuts. There's no way schizophrenia is gonna benefit so I asked him, why are you doing that? He said, well, what do we treat schizophrenia with? Seizure drugs. Hmm, ketogenic diet works for seizures, maybe it would help these guys. And he has case studies reported now, right? Depression, anxiety, stress, all these things. Dr. Unwin, this nutty guy, right? He, he, he takes 154 people, type 2 diabetes with his non-sustainable diet for two years, low carb, significant reduction in blood pressure, Mean weight loss, 20, 21 pounds. Occurred despite 20% reduction in blood. So this guy's taking people off blood pressure medicines, they're losing weight, their blood pressure's getting better while you're stopping the medicine. Hope is a very valuable thing in medicine and in life. This is my patient. She made me nutty for a lot of years because she went a knee replacement so bad. She was miserable, couldn't walk. She goes, Doc, clear me. I said, with an A1C of 8.9, because we all know, obviously now in the news, we're saying the higher your sugars are, the biggest risk of infection um, it, it, is high, in, high sugar levels. So I can't, if I send her for surgery, she's gonna have a disaster on her hands. So I said, you gotta get your act together. Here's your options. I can put you on insulin, lower your sugar down for surgery, but you're gonna gain weight, you're, you're gonna be metabolically sick and all this stuff, and then you're gonna get more and more, and then you're gonna be mad at me, and I'm gonna be mad at you. Or we could do lifestyle, like I've been telling you for the last two and a half years. So what she do, lifestyle. She reversed all of her stuff. Blood pressure normalized, took her off blood pressure medicines. Sugars are 5.6 now, right? Now I'm gonna get letters from an insurance company saying, why isn't she on a statin? Well, because all of her numbers are normal and she's not in the diabetic range anymore, right? And if she maintains it, that's what we're gonna do. If she goes up, then we have to look at that. Um, so I said, you're clear for surgery, no problem. Her A1C was 6.2 after six weeks. From 8.9 to 6.2 in six weeks. And then I know if I extrapolate that her sugar's a lot lower than that because half that sugar was in that really high range. I said, you're clear for surgery. And she looks at me and said, well, my knee doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> I said, you're kidding me. She goes, look, I'm climbing stairs. She squats down in my office, does all this stuff. I'm like, how can that be? It's because of the weight loss? So I called Ben Bickman. He goes, Brian, he laughs. He goes, Brian, you should have expected that. We see it all the time. Why? Because the chondrocytes can start working again. The inflammation goes down the joints and all this stuff. The joint can start doing what it's supposed to do. So how many diabetics are getting knee replacements that maybe if we intervene first with this crazy you know, magic pill, that we can help them. And I'll close on this. Uh, this is someone who's here, a good friend of mine now. We, we met in 
This is another reason we go to these conferences, Boca Raton. My life changed there. My whole future changed there because of people I met, right? My new partner I met there. So this is from the FAA. He's controlled. After his doctor saying, his endocrinologist said, look, you need to go on insulin. So fortunately, the experts were wrong yet again because his life, career, family changed, and now he has hope that he can reverse this disease process rather than saying, look, this is a natural, inevitable thing that happens. That's why all these people you're listening to being here, this is the value. Because when you look at the ultimate numbers of how many people are dying, your family members are way more likely to die of diabetes complications than anything else on Earth, right? Insulin resistance. So that's the end of the train wreck. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you.